Hello and welcome to my video, I'm Harry Dendal and today we'll be looking at the Ninja by Narlix. So first of all I'll show you quickly what I've got going and then I'll show you my mix. So in this mix we've got two distorted channels for the ninja, we've got two ambient channels, we've got a lead channel as an example for how to make a lead, it's not in the mix. You've got two bass channels, we're running one amp through the parallax, one DI, and we're running mod GGG modern and massive with some swells I've created myself. Uh, and now let me show you what the ninja sounds like in a full mix. So what you heard there was obviously the bass from Neural and the GGD, but apart from that, everything in this project is free to obtain. So let's start off with the main reason here, and that would be the distorted tones on the Ninja. So I'm running two Ninjas, one left, one right, as you do for double tracking in most genres of music and this is what the ninja sounds like with my settings. <laughs> As you can tell, I've gone for a gent tone or a prog metal tone. It's so I want it very articulate. I want a low gain amp that's pushed really hard with an overdrive normally maxed out on level and no drive on it. So I'll go through my settings on the Ninja first. So input and volume, I touch the volume a little bit to try and drive it more but I didn't find that response too much from this amp. So where I really started messing with the tone was first the gain. As I said, I want quite a low gain to be quite articulate because if you've got too much gain it comes quite flubby and boomy. <laughs> Compared to two, where I had it, more aggressive, and bass, I found this was quite a thin bright amp, so I boosted the bass, I've put a little extra into the middle once again to get that articulate gent sound, with a cut in the treble because of the brightness, as well as the presence, which, I, presence isn't more like it doesn't particularly cut on this amp from what I can tell I can it feels more like a shape knob on an orange amp where low it's dark high it's bright it doesn't feel particularly like another part of the EQ section so those are my settings for the distorted channel on the amp but before that I've got two plugins running I've got a noise gate which is just a stock noise gate from Cubase and I've got the TSE 808 which is a Tube Screamer replica, but in plug in form, obviously. As I said, I've got the drive down to nothing, fully maxed, and the tone quite high. That's, I'll show you the difference that makes. So if, I, if we turn the Tube Screamers off. Compared to the Tube Screamers on. <laughs> 
far. Personally, I much prefer that tone with the tube screamers. Then we bring in the noise gate. This is just the stock Cubase noise gate. Most um, doors, I believe, should have a noise gate in them. If not, there are free noise gates you can get online. There's a YouTuber I recommend called uh, Kimand Hushmand, I believe, and he did a very similar video in which he used the G gate and a G tune, I believe, which are both also free plugins. So I'm running this in front. This is the first thing in my signal chain. And this just stops all of the noise seeping through. Because as you can hear, the ninja is very noisy now. Especially once you've got tube screen on it. It's very, very buzzy. Which is fine. But it's what would be expected if we were running a real amp, a real high gain amp as well. Last in the signal chain for my distorted tones are these IRs. So we've got two IR loaders here. Um, both of these are by STL. They come with the uh, emissary amp. So these are impedance curves. I'm This is my first time using them, although they came with the Ninja, or they were on Narlex's website. So this we've got 250-150 amp impedance curves and a Mesa modern impedance curve. Personally, the one I found I liked the most was the 5150. Feel free to mess around with these though because I found they all sound pretty good. Um, and then we've got the actual cabinet impulse itself. This is a free impulse from ML Sound Labs. Uh, the best IR in the world. It's ML Sound Labs are some of the top IRs you will find. So the only other IRs I can think to recommend or IR loader I can think to recommend would cost money. But if you do have thirty pounds to spare for example, you could run the GGD Zilla Studio Caps. These sound pretty good as well. Personally, I like the Gen T preset because, of course, I do. I'm sure no one's surprised that the kid wearing the periphery shirt likes the Gen preset. Let's pray. <laughs> these IRs to make this sound good, you can make it sound good with just standard IRs. Although personally I prefer the sound of the Studio Zilla Cubs. sound in my opinion but once again that's only if you've got I believe it's 30 pounds to spare um, I'm not sure what that would be in dollars or in any other currency I'm afraid but all I know is it's a fairly cheap piece of software that I would highly recommend on the next on the clean channels for this track I've gone for an ambient sound so instead of your typical like clean where for chords or for a finger picking part this is more of a I'm using it kind of like a synth so this is for background noise I use this quite a lot a lot of gem people use this quite a lot bands like Peripheral Polaris Thornhill or very popular uh, very commonly used this technique I'll give you an example of what that sounds like quickly really like ambient sounds, I find them very calming and they're really good as kind of like a noise, just an ambient noise, just to make your songs feel more full. To get this effect, I'm simply running the Ninja on the Clean channel. No changes, that's literally how I found it on the Clean channel. I did find it very loud, so I have put the um, actual channel volume down about 5 decibels. 
on top of that I've got the same IR in the same loader then we've got the stock, keybase delay and ROM. ROM is a free native instruments plugin it's a reverb and it's really really good, I really like it I highly recommend it and then running it into a stereo delay I'm fairly certain most doors will have a stock version of this but depending on what you're using the layout will look very different and the settings will be completely completely altered but overall for this sound that we're going for you will be able to get it out of any door if you know how to do it last channel that I decided to make would be the lead channel I didn't use this in this track because I didn't feel like it needed a guitar solo but in my experience lead is generally a high saturated tone boosted with a drive pedal of some sort with delay and reverb that's normally what I would go for and that's what we've got right here I'm using the noise gate from before and the drive pedal from before I've got the ninja as you can see running at much higher gain and I've boosted the presence a little bit even though it's a very bright amp I, f I like the presence in a lead tone <laughs> noise gate does cut it off so to be fair I would probably have a bit less reduction but apart from that I, I would probably use that as a lead tone I believe it's quite good but it didn't take me very long to make and I do know for a fact that with more experimentation I could probably get a better tone but I'm not sure about if I could get a better tone from this plugin personally for what I do I think I really like it. So that's all that really matters, as long as you like your tone, that's fine. So I've, as you can see, I've got no post-processing on any of these guitars, no EQs are here, but that's just because this is demo, I want to show you what the plugin sounds like. Personally, I would probably put, I would put, I'll show you what I normally do on most amps, but I've got a preset which I'll throw on where I've got a high pass and a low pass just cutting out the really low frequencies and the really high frequencies I've got a small box cut which is just around 800 and then this cut here uh, um, number 3 is the cut around the 4.5k range this is a notorious range for guitars in which they typically you typically find that buzz, especially in distorted tones, you'll find that high pitched buzz that most people find really annoying and it kind of almost feels like tinnitus and if you notice it in a song then that song is ru well for me personally that song will be ruined because it feels like you've got a horrible humming in your ear the whole time so those are all important things that you can 100% do which won't cost any money which are also good upgrades I've also got a limiter just because I haven't mastered this, so it is how it sounds, and I didn't want it completely just clipping the whole time and sounding horrible and buzzy. I'll give you a small example of what it sounds like um, without the limiter. And then with the limiter. just doing that to show you that it's not really post-processing and it's not muddy, um, changing the tone of the guitars in any way. So that was my review on the Ninja and Alex. Overall a very bright amp, very good for modern metal, metal tones, very good for lead tones. The clean section is definitely usable so making it quite a versatile amp because once you've got a good bass clean tone you can really make whatever you want from it 
with the use of effects and stop plugins. I would hi highly recommend this plugin, but only if you're willing to get the IR loaders and the noise gate, because without the IRs and the noise gate, let's just turn all of these off. Get this plugin. Sounds like swarm of bees. That's not the amp fault, that's just what the amp sounds like. An amp sounds like without a cap. So just keep that in mind when you're using plugins like these that don't come with inbuilt cap sections. And thank you for watching.